This film is a classic. Go and watch it now if you haven't already. Take it off here, boy. Hello everyone. Jim Carrey's of Smiles for Cinephiles here. This video is an analysis of the film Cool Hand Luke. I will make the case that Luke is an existential Jesus figure. Existentialism is a philosophy which emphasizes the individual as a free and responsible agent who uses their will to determine their own fate. Luke is an atheist. He ignores God's plan and makes his own. Jesus taught man how to live so as to enter heaven upon death. Luke teaches men how to live to make their own heaven during life. Luke is a messiah. He's not the messiah, he's a very naughty boy. Yes, he is an anti-hero and hugely self-destructive, but his story arc bears remarkable similarities to that of Christ's. Let's dive straight in to make that comparison. As is apparent in this scene, Luke has humble origins just like Jesus. This is elaborated upon in the novel, this excerpt from page 145. Jackson's people were mountain people. They were coal miners, timber cutters, who had always struggled without luck to make a living out of hard, tough country. Luke is the son of a single mother her makeshift ambulance at the back of an old, dirty pickup truck. His only possession is his banjo. Luke is born of a man and a woman, but his father is absent from his life. This is a human reflection of the divine virgin birth. Let's listen in. You old man, Luke. He, wa he wasn't much good for sticking around, but damn it, he made me laugh. <laughs> yeah, I would have liked to have known him the way you talk about it. You've done your best, Arletta. What I've done with myself is my own problem. No, oh, no, it ain't, Luke. You ain't alone. Everywhere you go, I'm with you. And John, too. Luke's cross to bear. Never thought maybe that's a heavy load. Oh. Why, we, we always thought you were strong enough to carry it. Was we wrong? Under the rule of the Romans, Jesus was proclaimed to be the saviour, the person who would confront the power system and structures of the time. Dragline is a Peter figure in this story. Let's listen to him. Oh, Luke. He was some boy. Cool hand Luke L. He's a natural born world shaker. Dragline, the Peter figure, is skeptical, and it is at this point that he becomes a believer that Luke is their savior. He beats you with nothing. Just like today when he kept coming back at me. With nothing. Yeah, well, sometimes nothing can be a real cool hand. <laughs> oh, oh. Go sit in here next to my boy. This scene also depicts his death and burial his rebirth and being risen again. The transfiguration is a miracle which represents the meeting of human nature and God. Luke is the bridge between heaven and earth. Don't boss. Get to work. 
Don't box, don't hit me anymore. Luke invokes God's name. God say, don't hit me anymore. What was that you said? What was that name you used, Luke? Oh God. Oh God. Now he has his mind right. He finds his faith. God, I pray to God you don't hit me anymore. You got your mind right, Luke. The act of repenting is also portrayed here. To repent is to change our minds about our sins. Oh, I got it right, boy. Suppose you just backslide on us. Oh no, I won't. I won't, boy. Suppose you used a back sass. No, I won't, I won't, I got my mind right. A foreshadowing of Luke's death. You try to run again, we're gonna kill you. No, I won't, I won't. He shines as a bright light in the reflection of the devil's eyes. He is asked to rise and cleanse himself. Go get cleaned up and get yourself some sleep. He is called Sun from the Captain up above. Come on, Sun. Shot from below with a halo. Come on up out here. He is asked to rise. Christ's trial was for 40 days in the wilderness. Luke mustered a human four days. Hey, Dad, for four days, you're going to need a little extra. You got plenty for you. Now, you know the rules. Got to clean your plate to go back in the box. Right, boss? That's enough, dog boy. Oh, man, you free world food's got a big appetite. We're going to stretch that hog belly right out, huh? This scene is also a symbolic sacrament and last supper. A representation of eating for his sake. After his temptation, Jesus was fed by angels. Reflecting this... Luke has his disciples feed for him. Jesus predicted his own death. Luke's death was foreshadowed by the boss in the grave scene. And this fake picture, the illusion that kills, again is a foreshadowing of Luke's ultimate demise. Shortly before his death, Jesus' disciples turn away from him. Luke's are no different. Coco here seen tearing up the picture. Everyone turns their back to him. Jesus wept for man's mortality. Luke's is ultimately more in self-pity. <laughs> Albeit an unwitting betrayal, Judas was a thief. Dragline is a safe cracker. Luke, you all right? They got us, boy. They're out there, thicker than flies. Bosses, dogs, sheriffs, more guns than I've ever seen in my life. You ain't got a chance. They caught up with me right after we split up. And they was aiming to kill you. But I fixed it. I got them to promise if you give up peaceful, 
They ain't even going to whip you this time. This scene is one which you will probably be very familiar with. The symbolic ending, having Luke crucified on the table. You probably would have already associated this with the life of Jesus. There are 50 eggs, one for each soul in the camp. Luke is consuming the sins to save the souls of men. Dragline states... Just nine more between you and everlasting glory. Jesus was crucified with two thieves, one who defends him and one who rebukes him. A connection made later on in the film, Dragline and Coco, Safecracker and Jewel Thief, one stands with him, the other turns his back on Luke. Hold it! He didn't swallow the last! No, he didn't swallow the last! think so, huh? Well, let's take a look here! Open that mouth! <laughs> This is Luke's one and only miracle. Nobody can eat 50 eggs. After his death and rebirth, Jesus ascended into heaven. Luke does the same at the very end of the film and is accompanied, as Dragline states in the very telling quote, A true vision of paradise itself with two of the angels I'd have pressed around with my boy. As the camera ascends up into the heavens, at the crossing of the hard road, Luke is crucified, a pair of angels beside him as he ascends up into heaven. So, what do you think? Is there anything I may have missed? I look forward to your comments. An extended analysis and multiple character studies are currently in production, and if you enjoyed this, please subscribe, like, and share. That way, I can make more. Thank you very much.